Hey, super scientists. We're continuing with your study of pathogens and microorganisms, and we're on page eight in your microbiology lab notebook. So the two pathogens we're looking at today are protists and fungi. Not like, oh, Mr. Cavender, he's a fungi, but fungi as in the plural of fungus. So we're looking at the characteristics of each of these different types of microorganisms, and we're starting with protists. So protists are in the kingdom protista, uh, whereas humans, for example, we are in the kingdom animalia. We are animals, the animal kingdom. So protists are eukaryotes. If you look at your stems here, EU means true or normal, and carry, K-A-R-Y, refers to cell nucleus. So protists have a true cell nucleus. So they are going to have their DNA in a nucleus, unlike bacteria, which we know are prokaryotes because they don't have a nucleus. Protists are going to live in moist surroundings, so they either live in water or in areas that are damp. Most of them are going to be unicellular, so they're one cell. However, some of them are multicellular, but for the most part, they're going to be microscopic. You'll need to use a microscope to uh, be able to see some of them. But some of these plant-like protists, like slime mold right here, you are able to see those uh, without the aid of a microscope. But again, most of them you're going to need a microscope in order to see. Like the red algae, our volvox, paramecium, and our glass-like diatoms. So we know that our stem uni means one, so that should help you to remember that. Protists can act parasitic, and when they act parasitic, they can be harmful. They can cause diseases, infectious diseases, and they can also use uh, organisms uh, like people even for a host. So in that way, they can be parasitic or they can act like parasites. So we'll talk about some of those in just a second. So here's some different types of diseases caused by protists, and these are specifically on this page uh, caused by biological vectors. So we know a biological vector, bio means life, so a biological vector is going to be a living organism other than a human that can transmit a disease, that can pass a disease um, onto another organism. So let's look at what these are. Malaria, so this is a big example. This is probably one of the most likely ones that you will be asked about on your EOG. So malaria is transmitted through the bite of a mosquito. Chagos disease is going to be transmitted by this cone-nosed bug here. And um, this guy you can find a lot in caves. Um, you can find them around here as well. When I was in Belize, we saw one of them um, that was actually had Chagos disease prevalent in that area um, in one of the caves that we were in. African sleeping sickness, so the trypanosoma, this is transmitted by the tsetse fly, which we see here, so that's going to be uh, more in African areas. And babesiosis, so this is transmitted through the bite of a tick. And we have lots of different types of ticks, and there are lots of different types of diseases that can be transmitted by ticks as well. So ticks are, uh, ticks and mosquitoes actually are pretty big biological vectors. Here's a few other diseases caused by protists. These are not transmitted by biological vectors. Slime mold. So um, these, um, or this type of slime mold here is going to grow um, on the ground. You may have seen it even on mulch, like out around your house. That's one area where you see it a lot. So that's what is growing on this picture here. Downy mildew. So this affects plants again. So I want you guys to be able to understand that um, protist-based diseases um, may not only affect humans and animals, but can affect plants as well, because sometimes we don't really think about that. Um, so you may have seen downy mildew on leaves. You see these spots a lot and this kind of discoloration. Brain-eating amoeba. So this is one that we have heard about um, in the news within the past couple of years. So this amoeba, this pseudopod, um, can affect your nervous system and um, can even cause death. Amoeba can also cause dysentery. So again, dysentery is diarrhea till you die. It's where you get really di dehydrated from uh, drinking contaminated water. And um, this amoeba, this pseudopod, um, replicates within your body, makes you really sick. And giardiasis, so this giardia, uh, these guys here are going to um, cause a lot of intestinal problems also, digestive issues. So which of these diseases were transmitted by biological vectors? Well, we just went over those a second ago. Babesiosis transmitted by a tick. 
malaria transmitted by mosquito, Chagos disease transmitted by the cold-nosed um, kissing bugs is what they refer to as sometimes, and African sleeping sickness transmitted by the tsetse fly. Now, these are not the only diseases or the only protist-based uh, diseases transmitted by biological vectors, but they're some of the more prevalent ones that you're more likely to hear about. So now let's move on to your last microorganism, fungi. So again, fungi is the plural for the word fungus. So it's not funguses, it's fungi. Fungi are eukaryotes. So they, again, they do have a nucleus. They have their DNA in a nucleus. They have cell walls, so they are similar to bacteria in that aspect, that bacteria have cell wall and fungi do as well. They're heterotrophs, so they are not photosynthetic. They will consume something. They will ingest whatever they need in order to give them nourishment, to give them energy. They also are going to use spores or hyphae to reproduce. So I'm going to show you a picture of that in just a second. So you can kind of see the hyphae are these stringy things. Um, they look sort of like roots, but they make up not only um, underground composition for fungi, but they also make up the stalk as well. So fungi can use those hyphae to reproduce or they can use these spores. And if you've ever stepped on one of those uh, puffball mushrooms like out in the woods where all this black dust um, spews into the air, you're just helping the fungi to reproduce. You're literally stepping on a fungus and all that black stuff, those uh, little black puff balls, all that stuff that goes into the air, that's all spores from a fungus, just so you know. So um, the fungi that helps um, fungi to reproduce, the hyphae here, excuse me, that help fungi to reproduce, um, are gonna help to increase genetic diversity through allowing sexual reproduction in fungi. And the way that they do that is the hyphae extend uh, down into, this is a, an orange, just to give you an example, but they extend into a substance to gain nourishment. But the hyphae can also kind of cross over with other hyphae. So if you have like hyphae from another mushroom or another fungus over here, they can cross over and they can link together and uh, transfer DNA. So that helps to increase genetic diversity among a fungus species. And fungi can also reproduce asexually through budding. So this is very similar to the process of a binary fission that we've talked about with bacteria. So this is a picture of yeast cells, like you might use yeast in making bread, like homemade bread. So you can see some of these here, like this one, this other one here. So literally you start off with one and then it just kind of elongates and gets kind of a, another bud on the end of it and then it splits apart. So this one, that's what's happening here. It's getting longer and longer and longer, and it's going to uh, separate right here. That's where your fission is going to occur, and that will be separated into two um, fungal cells. So what are some diseases that are caused by fungi? So it's important to note that not all fungi cause diseases, just like not all bacteria cause diseases, not all protists cause diseases, but these are a few that are caused by fungi. This is one that you're probably familiar with, ringworm. You may have even had this. A lot of kids get this. So ringworm is a fungus. It's not a worm. And it's where you get this sort of red ring on your skin. And it's sort of itchy and scaly. And it's got kind of like a white center to it. So that's ringworms caused by a fungus. Pneumocystis. This is something that um, occurs from breathing in um, specific spores and um, it is going to affect the lung. So you're going to uh, breathe in that fungus and it um, causes some respiratory problems. Aspergillosis um, is another one. So you can see the fungus here is actually um, on this tissue. So this picture is showing, it's an internal picture. So it's, it's showing uh, in your body, uh, like in your respiratory tract. So the fungus is actually growing attached to the tissue. And histoplasmosis, um, this is another one that um, sometimes it kind of pops up in different areas. Um, sometimes there are areas where it's more um, uninhabited like out west, but um, these spores get into the ground a lot. And then um, when you have organisms that are kind of scratching at the ground, like uh, chickens here, rats, 
um, mice, like out on the prairie out west where you've got a lot of mice running around. As they're stirring this up, then people will end up breathing it in because the spores are getting into the air. So it causes uh, problems with your respiratory tract. So you're going to find that most fungal diseases are going to affect either the skin, like the case of the ringworm, or the respiratory system. So what two organs do most fungal diseases infect? We just talked about this, skin and respiratory system, lungs primarily, because you will either be in contact with the fungus and it's going to get onto your skin and will then reproduce from there, or in your lungs, in the case of your respiratory system, you'll be breathing it in. And in most cases, it's going to be breathing in the spores, which then will kind of embed themselves into the respiratory tract. So here's the aspergillosis and the histoplasmosis. So all four of these are going to have an impact on either skin or lungs. So you should have finished up your study on the five pathogens.